now everything doesn't work out as fine as it did last time there are special cases so the case one is the first element uh, in a row is zero this causes divide by zero here's an illustration so we have characteristic equation s cube plus 2s plus 1 so we can write that as s cube plus 0 times s squared plus 2s plus 1 write the root table for that write the first set of entries so that is coefficient of s cube skip 1 power of s 2 right here that's a 0 I don't write, need to write that coefficient of s squared which is 0 skip 1 power of s 1 it's a constant term comes here now I can't find this entry because this entry would be this time this 0 times 2 minus 1 times 1 divided by 0 so that's is divided by 0 so the way we deal with that is replace 0 with epsilon where epsilon is a small positive number so 0 less than epsilon very much less than 1 so epsilon is 10 to the power of minus 6 or minus 8 something like that and then we keep doing what we have to do so this entry is epsilon times 2 minus 1 divided by epsilon that entry is 0 and this entry here is this entry here times 1 minus 0 times epsilon divided by this entry that's 1 now let's look at this entry here so we can write this 2 epsilon minus 1 divided by epsilon is 2 minus 1 divided by epsilon since epsilon is a very small positive number 1 divided by epsilon is a very large positive number 2 minus a large positive number is very much less than 0 so this is negative so we have positive positive negative positive two sign changes therefore there should be two poles or two roots in the right half plane and I actually went ahead and solved this with MATLAB and if you see there are two complex roots with positive real parts and one real root with negative real parts so this is in the left half plane this complex pair is in the right half plane two roots in the right half plane two sign changes the second case is an entire row becomes zero now there are particular situations when this happens the first situation is when you have two real roots equidistance from the imaginary axis the second case is when there is a complex pair on on the imaginary axis so this is a marginally stable system and the third case is two complex pairs equidistance from the imaginary axis now this entire row becomes zero always at an odd power of s in the root table so it's the, the row that is zero is always associated with an odd power of s so let's look at an example where an entire row becomes zero so we have this system where d equal to k k is the controller parameter the plant is 1 divided by s times s plus 1 times s plus 2 so just like we did before we do the closed loop transfer function we find the characteristic equation which is the denominator of the closed loop transfer function and set it to 0 we substitute our functions d is k g is 1 divided by s times s plus 1 times s plus 2 we multiply throughout by the common denominator to get the characteristic equation in this form now the question is what happens when we vary k from 0 to infinity so k equals 0 what happens k equals 0 the roots of c of s are at 0 minus 1 minus 2 k equal to 1 the roots are somewhere else k equal to 2 the roots are yet another place so the roots essentially change now here is a plot of 
the roots of c of s as I change k. So when k equal to 0, the roots are at 0, minus 1, minus 2. As I change k, these roots start moving. There are three roots. So there are three curves, essentially. The blue curve, the green curve, and the red curve. So one root just remains real root, goes to infinity, minus infinity. Two roots start moving towards each other, and then they meet, and then they go off like that. Now if you notice, these two roots at one point of time, for some particular value of k, cross the imaginary axis, and after that, they go into the right half plane, and that makes the system unstable. Just when they are about to cross the imaginary axis, or when they are on the imaginary axis, the system is marginally stable. And this distance here gives you the natural frequency of oscillation. In this case, omega n is right about 1.4. So that's what I said. Now let's do the root table. That's my characteristic equation. Multiply all, all the terms out. Write down the root table. Start filling in the entries. Just like I did before. Coefficient of s cube. Coefficient of s. 0. Coefficient of s squared. Constant term. 0. This term is. 3 times 2 minus k divided by 3. This term is 3 times 0 minus 1 times 0 divided by 3 which is 0. And this term is k. So it's this term times k minus 0 times 3 divided by this term which is going to give you k. Now this is positive, this is positive. So for the system to be stable this better be positive and k better be positive. There should be no sign changes in the first column of a for a stable system. So these are the two conditions. I say 6 minus k divided by 3 greater than 0, which means that k should be less than 6. And the last entry here says k should be greater than 0. So k should be between 0 and 6 for the system to be stable. When k equal to 6, the system becomes marginally stable. So let's substitute k equal to 6 in the root table. If I do that, this is what I get. I get an entire row as 0. What I do is I form the auxiliary equation from the row about the 0 row. So this is coefficient of s squared. This is a constant term. So that's my auxiliary equation. If I solve the auxiliary equation, I get s is plus or minus root of 2i, which is nearly equal to 1.4i, which is omega n times i. And earlier we saw from the actual plot that omega n is in fact 